as I get started, I'd like to ask you all a quick question, and I'd like you all to respond out loud as loud as you can, okay? So when I ask you, I would like you all to say be really loud at the same time. Are you ready? Who's the, who's the leader of the club that's made for you and me? M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-C -E -E. Hey there, hi there, ho there, you're as welcome as can be. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-C -E -E. Thanks guys, thank you very much. I'm obviously no professional singer, but thank you. <laughs> so, why did I just do that? Why did I, well, I have multiple reasons. One, you all knew the song, which shows how popular Mickey is. It goes without saying how popular he is in our pop culture. But it's also because I really love Mickey Mouse, if you couldn't tell. Um, so Mickey is such a great character because he exhibits so many qualities that I like to see in characters. And he's really just, he's really uplifting and he's just so much fun when you see him in the parks. Like, a lot of fun. And he's one of those characters that I really admire. And I'm sure you all have characters or people in your lives that you really admire as well. So I'd like you to think of one of those characters. Each of you think of a character or a person in your life that you really admire. And so when I list some of the reasons why I like Mickey Mouse, I'd like you to see if those apply to your character. So I like Mickey Mouse because he's smart, because he's kind, because he's funny, because he's helpful, and because he's generous. So did any of those reasons apply to your characters? So if Ants, how many had one? How about all of them? All right, pretty good. So those are reasons I like the character, and you all have those reasons for liking your own. So in other words, those characters to us might be what we call role models. Now, the role model was, the term role model was first said by a psychiatrist named Robert K. Murray when describing the ideal of any sort of occupation or feature. Now we sort of use it to describe the type of person that we aspire to be, someone who we can look up to and really just take in our lives. And in this song, in this definition, I usually consider there to be someone that I call an ideal role model. Now the ideal role model hardly ever exists. We never really see them because there is no perfect person to say. But there are characters that come pretty darn close and there are traits that go to those ideal role models, as I've dubbed them, that all role models should show at some point. And in this in no particular order, they are the big eight qualities that I like to call them. The first one is kindness. Now this is an external goodness towards others and a goodwill towards other people. Second is respect which actually differs from kindness because it's not just an external respect towards others, but it's also an internal, it's also an internal respect of other people's rights. Third is community, which goes supporting your country, supporting those around you, and being a help towards other people, which all good role models are. Then we have intelligence, which goes far beyond good SAT scores. Intelligence is the clearness and independence of mind that is used to actually help other people in the process, not for your own good, but for others. Strength, which brawn and being great at sports are amazing qualities, but there's also the internal strength too, the ability to think clearly, to act for one's own self. And as I get into that, we talk about agency. Which is, which is independence of thought and independence of action because no leader is dependent on other people. They are helped by other people, but they think about their own choices as well. Integrity goes with honesty and doing the right thing just because it's right, even when no one is looking. Then responsibility, which includes stepping up to the plate when you need to and doing the right thing at all times, like it's kind of like integrity. So, we all agree that these are amazing traits that we all want to share, and we all share. So, why doesn't this speech feel exactly relevant? Why does it feel like I could give the same thing to a group of preschoolers and it would have, this, it would have a better resonance than it does in our main culture, in our main pop culture? In other words, what's changed? Why doesn't this feel like it should be something said at a TED Talk? So, why doesn't it seem fresh? Well, one possible explanation is that times have changed. Maybe we aren't looking for these same qualities all the time anymore, and instead we're just, they just kind of fall out of the mainstream, just because of time. Well, I don't buy it. You see, I don't believe time has changed role models because time hasn't changed us. I mean, yeah, there's noticeable differences in technology, I'm not gonna say there aren't, but there's also, there's no change in who humans are and what we value. And the same role models that were then are now. There's one thing, 
or a couple things that have changed, and I can see them all on stage. First of all, there's the lights that are blaring down right here and allowing you guys to see me. There are cameras that are filming me talk so the digital world can all see, and there's me describing the actions that great role models take. In other words, there's lights, camera, action. So, right now you are all members of my audience, and not my audience, only my audience, but the audience of everyone speaking here. You expect probably a certain level of talking, or you expect some to walk away with some idea, or you just have nothing to do on your Saturday, either way. So, in other words, you expect something from me, just like you expect things from Hollywood. You expect good movies, you expect original content that is inspiring. Well, if every, I think Hollywood realizes if every movie that they made followed the big eight ideals that we all cherish, then eventually to them movies wouldn't be original, and they think that we wouldn't go to see them. So instead, they're just going to ditch the big eight and go for something else instead. Whatever it takes to make enough money from you, the audience, because they feel that what you want to see is something diverse. And this isn't diversity in role models, but rather taking a huge leap away from what we value and just putting up all those negative symbols that you see there on the screen. It dehumanizes the media because it dehumanizes the way that we see our integ integral role models. However, there's one other thing that's doing even more of this than just the silver screen, and it's sitting a few centimeters away from your head. So, we've heard a lot about social media today, but one of the big things that I want to drive home with it is that social media dehumanizes our world in that we don't see people's genuine emotions when they're putting stuff out there oftentimes. They're putting out what it takes to get enough followers and enough likes. And this isn't just people, but companies who want to get those followers. Those, and that same kind of money from those followers. So rather than do everything along the big eight, what they're just going to do is just post, they're going to depart from it to gain more followers. And you can see this. And so when we combine the two, this becomes sort of how we see the world. You know, like, because all the world, all the stuff that's out there in the media is just all that negative stuff that contradicts this big eight. And eventually the world becomes a kind of cold, dark place when you look at it through that lens. And do you know what happens? Those great qualities, those same big eight qualities that I've been referencing, they just disappear, just like that. And the reason being is because we just see, we just see the world through this. And that's a problem. But here's the thing. I can't just stand up here and tell you all not to watch R-rated movies or to delete your Facebook account because that ship sailed, well, Facebook ship sailed 10 years ago. And I have to be a real buzzkill to tell you you can't watch your favorite comedies or your favorite action flicks. They, in a sense, are dehumanizing the way we see the world, but there's no way of getting rid of them. Yes, they're compromising our role model values, but they're so deeply ingrained into this pop culture that we have. Just like Mickey Mouse was, because think about it, you all knew the song, so therefore it's so ingrained into the into our media. But there's, but this stuff is like it's, it's it's still excuse me ingrained in our media in the way we view the world. Therefore, it's not going anywhere. No matter how hard you try, you're not getting rid of the bad stuff. And that's just the thing. I like to think of you know pop culture as this sort of wave, and this wave follows the tide of trends. I know I'm great at naming things. But this type of trends picks up whatever's popular in it, whatever it wants in the digital culture gets put into this. So you all probably recognize, you probably recognize a lot of those symbols, and it's because that these things are what's popular, they're what's in society. And they're, it's largely made by Hollywood and social media because that's what's put out there on the internet and what we see. Okay, well, where do we establish, where does Hollywood, who do they want to impress? Namely, where do they get their inspiration? Well, they get it from the audience, us, because they perceive that we want to see certain things, so they're going to put what they want out there for us to see. Well, if that's the case, then doesn't that mean that we are the wave of pop culture? Doesn't that mean that we are the ones in charge? Can we control what goes into there? Therefore, can we make room in, the ways we, in, the, in this wave to put what we want in there? So if we want to see more role models in our mainstream media and see more of them out in the world, then why don't we just be the role models? Actually, why don't we just decide that we're going to be the role models, and if we are the role models, eventually Hollywood and social media will catch on, and thus we can add all those great values that we want to see right into that wave, so seamlessly like that. 
Because that's the big thing. If we are the role models in our society, eventually that spreads to all the types of worldviews. Eventually that's, that's seen as the it thing, the cool thing, and that becomes what is there. So the big question is, why don't we do it? You know, why? It just seems so easy to just put all this out on paper and just say, you know what, we can, we can do this. We can be our, the role models that we want to see in the world. It seems so easy. So the big question is, what's stopping us? Why hasn't this happened yet? Well, to me, it's a no-brainer. And you're going to all be astounded when you see this. Ready? And I think my graphic's not coming up. That's because, I don't know why, there is no graphic. That's because nothing is stopping us from being the role models that we want to see and from changing media and changing the way the world presents us into what we want to see. And that's just a thing. The world that we have, it doesn't have to be a dark one devoid of role models. It can have all of them, and it can have all of them there. And we, since we are in control of pop culture, we can control what gets out there, and then we can put those same values that we love into our pop culture. And therefore, characters like Mickey Mouse and all those characters that you love, that we want to see in the world, they'll just have to be reserved for when you see them at Disney World, or for fond memories of the past, but they can be ever-present in our world. And therefore, we all have a job to do. It's a kind of a role for us all, simply to be the role models. It's a, it's a straightforward conclusion, but it's a necessary one that we get by just looking at the world, saying, we want to see more role models out there, so let's follow the big eight ideals and just be those role models. And then we won't have just added more role models into the media and into the, into the pop culture, but we'll have added them in ourselves and in our non-pop culture, but just who we are as people. Therefore, I can only really conclude the way that my own role model might. See you real soon. Thank you.